Saving the best for last, it's CEO to CEO on the inclusive conversation, Strictly Boardroom. Flex CEO Ravathi Advathi will talk to Silicon Valley Leadership Group CEO Ahmad Thomas about her route to running a $24 billion global company, and also the lessons you learn about identity when playing among the pinnacles of power in Silicon Valley. Thanks so much for joining us on this virtual stage, Ramathi. It's an honor to have you. Thank you, Ahmad. Thanks for having me here. I'm excited to be part of this conversation. Looks like you had a really hectic day with a great agenda. Well, it, it has been great. And I hope and I know this discussion is going to be wonderful for all listening. Uh, everyone in Silicon Valley should know or needs to know who you are. You know, Flex is a $7 billion market cap, $24 billion in, in revenue. Uh, it's leading edge company that helps diverse, a uh, very diverse customer base design and build products to improve the world. So maybe with that framing, let me ask the question of you. Uh, what has it taken to build and, and design Revithy into a, a top female global CEO in Silicon Valley? Well, thanks, Ahmad, for the question. You know, I'd say my uh, background, and, you know, I say this often, is that my background is like uh, many others, right? I come from very humble beginnings. I grew up in India uh, in a family of, uh, with a family of five girls. So obviously, it was a very woman dominated household, um, you know, with some loud voices and loud personalities on what we wanted the world to be. Uh, so I'm definitely molded by, uh, you know, all my sisters and my parents um, and, uh, you know, went the traditional route of deciding to do engineering. And uh, the only the thing that was non-traditional about it was I went and did mechanical engineering, which was, you know, there was no girls in my class when I did mechanical engineering. It was a, somewhat of an unusual field for for a woman to 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 choose, and um, like many others, you know, got the opportunity to come to the United States as an immigrant, um, and uh, you know, landed my first job in Shawnee, Oklahoma, and in a small town of thirty thousand people, uh, was my first manufacturing job. Got to be in a factory floor there. Um, and that's kind of what started my career. And after that, I just, uh, I moved around a lot. I moved, um, you know, to different states within the US, uh, then moved to relocated to England for some time, um, moved to China in the middle, um, you know, came back to the US. So just, you know, took a lot of different roles, a lot of different functions within the organizations I worked for. I mainly worked for two companies most of my career, a company called Eaton, which is a diversified industrial company and a company called Honeywell, which is also a diversified industrial company before I came to Flex. Um, so it's, um, you know, kind of a very simple background, you know, very humble beginnings and, uh, um, you know, just was fortunate that I was in all the right places at the right time, took many different roles and all that, uh, you know, got me to where I am today and started with Flex actually uh, uh, almost two years ago, now 20 months ago. Uh, incredible. I like to say luck is where preparation meets opportunity and certainly you've been very well prepared. Uh, and you've joined us today for our inaugural series here, uh, Inclusive Conversations Around Diversity. Uh, given your own identity, what does diversity and inclusion mean to you? And how does your recent board seat on, on Catalyst, a global nonprofit advocating for advancement of women, uh, perhaps play a role? You know, I'm, a, I'm very excited to be part of uh, the Catalyst board. It's got uh, Catalyst as an organization has done some unbelievable work, um, you know, I would say in a very contemporary fashion to really put data and facts and good information in front of organizations. Um, on why diversity and inclusion makes sense for companies to, to focus on and what are the ways to do it. So it's a real honor to be part of Catalyst. I've followed them as an organization for so many years. So to you know be invited to be 
as part of their board is as an exciting uh, opportunity for me. My life is all about um, the only reason I'm here is because even though I worked in places like Shawnee, Oklahoma and Hutchinson, Kansas, you know, there were people who included me at the table when I needed to make conversations and have conversations and make decisions. Um, so my whole life has been, um, you know, because there were people who were ready to include me, were ready to sponsor me. So obviously sitting on that stage, you know, you have to say, this is important. The only way we get to, you know, gender parity, um, you know, or, you know, and parity for our black colleagues is only if we have enough leaders being passionate about this and deciding that they want to sponsor um, conversations in companies, you know, and organizations and really be part of the change. It, it is shocking to me to watch how few women still are there in the tech space. And then if you think about manufacturing in an industrial setting, that's a whole different ball game altogether. Um, and I say this often is that, you know, the transactional elements of why people, you know, aren't in organizations or go getting promoted or in leadership roles about, you know, flex work or telecommute, all those are, you know, mainly getting taken care of. So it always comes down to are people making the right decisions when you have to make a decision on that next promotion, when you want somebody sitting at the table with you, when you are you including them. So it requires enough people to talk about it uh, before change really happens. We've made a lot of progress, but not enough, right? And so for me, it's really important that in a place like Flex, where we have 165,000 employees, we have an opportunity to make real impact on this topic. And we wanna be part of that conversation. We wanna make sure that our 165,000 people have a voice in the kind of culture we create and hopefully that influences everybody else around us. And that's why, you know, I think it's important to be a voice on this conversation. Well, can you describe how you embed your values of diversity and inclusion into such a large, you mentioned over 160,000 employees, such a large multinational like Flex uh, that you lead? Yeah, and Ahmed, like last year when I joined Flex, I was fortunate to go through a conversation with our team where we really sat down and rethought our values, our mission, our purpose, and we really rethought what does it mean to be who we are? And, you know, the things we do sometimes are so far away, maybe from Silicon Valley and tech, right? We're starting up a facility maybe in Ukraine or in Romania in a small place where there were no jobs created before. And so what does it mean to be inclusive in that culture, right? And so as we were thinking about our vision and mission and our purpose and our values, we were trying to fit it and make it understandable for people all over the world, whether you're in Romania, Ukraine, or Brazil, or India, or Malaysia, or China, or here in the US, everybody needed to feel like they were included in this value that meant that we were gonna treat people well. Doesn't matter where you're in the world, doesn't matter the kind of job you do. And so that's how we've tried to embed thinking about inclusion and diversity in our value system. And we talk a lot about it. We've had a lot of public conversations in our company, um, you know, by very senior leaders about the topic of inclusion. We are making it okay to talk about it, about what needs to be done. And that's how we're embedding it in our day to day. And I'm just, you know, our, our task is just, you know, beginning, Amma. There's, there's a lot of room to make this better. Yeah. Um, and we're trying to have this conversation in every cor corner of our company. If you are a person who's working in a shop floor and you have a, you have a life that looks different than probably most others here in tech or in Silicon Valley, we want inclusion to fit for that conversation, right? So we're trying to make it work for everyone. But the most important thing is our value is that we will treat people with respect and doesn't matter who you are and where you come from. And that's the kind of value we're trying to drive in an organization. And we're talking a lot about it. We're making it okay to talk about it. Which is incredibly important. <clears throat> and I wanna return you mentioned a, a few times this concept, the notion of a seat at the table. And you've talked about the board there at Catalyst. Uh, you served on the board at, at BAE and, and now recently joined the board at, at Uber. 
uh, one of our wonderful member companies. Uh, given how much representation matters, literally a seat at the table, uh, tell us what it takes to serve on these large public corporate boards, uh, how you got the board seats, and how we can get more women on these boards. Yeah, and I think, you know, um, I just love the conversation we had just before I came on and how California is leading in terms of making sure that board representation, whether it's for underrepresented people or women, um, you know, is being heard and there's real legislation to support that. Um, you know, for me, my journey with board started when I was with Eaton and I was chief operating officer and leading their one of their top businesses. I was part of the board process there and, um, you know, got invited uh, to be on boards just as, you know, as the nature of the role I was in, right? And um, I had a passion for, for really focusing on, you know, boards that were related to something that I could associate with, that I could understand. And so I chose a very engineering oriented board when I joined BAE. And what I really learned from sitting on boards is that there is tremendous value to have a voice that's different, right? In the case of BAE, the voice that's different is, you know, I was a woman leader who came up through the ranks, who worked in the shop floor, who really understood kind of what it means to do all of that and get to where I was. So my voice and my points of view are some, sometimes different than, you know, people who have had a different career path. And um, so I've had the opportunity to be on, on, you know, both the Eaton board and the BAE board, um, and bringing that perspective. And when I got, when I came to, um, to uh, you know, move to the Bay Area, I really understood that it would be helpful for me to, one is be in a board that was closer here. So I didn't have to travel so much because I do have children at home and I needed to manage my travel. And being a sitting CEO, I did not want to be in more than one board. So I chose to resign off the BAE board when I got invited to be on the Uber board. And I'm very excited about being on the Uber board because it brings for me the tech framework, which I am learning and understanding, but also brings the global distributed workforce, you know, which I understand extremely well. So it brings the best of both. Um, and I think it's really, really important to have a seat at the, at the table for more women, for more underrepresented people, mm -hmm. so that we can have different points of view. And the points of view that we bring are sometimes the same, but most of the times they're unique. And that's the advantage I see from the boards I have been in, whether it's bi solving business issues or whether it's solving issues about inclusion and diversity, the, the views that we bring sometimes provide a perspective that I feel like makes the business better in the long term. And so I would just encourage all the women who are listening to this conversation is take the effort to join a board, whether it's a for-profit board or a not-for-profit board, what you learn from your colleagues, the networks that you make um, really help, I would say significantly, not only from contribution that you can make, but also how it Im improves you as an individual and as a leader. So I think it's a great experience that I would encourage all of us to try to be a part of. Well, thank you so much, Revathy, for sharing your perspective. For all of you out there, if you don't know Revathy and Flex, now you do, you are a tremendous leader. Continue these important conversations. And again, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me, Ahmad. Bye-bye.